so we can to hang out for a little bit. It's not exactly 6 o'clock yet. It's got two minutes, but now I can finally smoke. Light it up. How's everybody's day going? I'm digging this music, bro. It's not bad. It is not bad. It's royalty free. We won't get shut down for music. No copyright. Yo, yo, yo. All right. That comes courtesy of Champagne Ocean from YouTube's Royalty Free. How is everybody doing tonight on Facebook Land? Facebook Live. Facebook Live. We are here. Let's see who's in town. Let's see who's on right now. We Let's got know if you're in the chat. Bill, Ruben, Darcy, Bill, Clyda, Eric, shoot, Chuck. What's up, Chuck? I haven't seen Chuck Horn in a little bit. He's one of our very first winners on the show. Boom. Today's a special day, and here's why it's special. We are smoking Avo cigars. Not, uh. only, not only Avo. But our favorite all time legato, the avo legato, exo. exo legato size, by far my favorite. The very first cigar I ever fell in love with is right here. It's a beautiful thing. It's a cigar. Not, it's a cigar booty call. It's better than that. Seriously, because I just can go back to it, call it up whenever I need it. 
Falls never there. says no to me. <laughs> never says no. Never, mm. never disappoints. <laughs> That's what it's called—a cigar booty call, y'all. You gotta find one. That could be a always new, go that back. Could be a new segment. Cigar booty call. That could be a new segment. I'm telling you, I like it. <laughs> you never know what we're gonna come up with in these parts. What is going on, everybody? Bill is like, what's up, Vegas? Vegas. I'll tell you what's up. Just what's up, Vegas? Just what's up, Vegas? What's up, Vegas? It is a beautiful day here in Las Vegas. It is almost raining. Uh, we looked outside, and it was raining on the other side of the street, but not on our side of the street. So that must Crazy. mean, I mean, we're blessed with something here. We would like a little rain to uh, break down some of this heat. It was like a rain wall. It was. It was like it just stopped. So, by the way, we are, uh, again, we're smoking avo today. Today we are highlighting all the beautiful avos. Um, and why might you ask, are we doing this with avo? Well, why would we one, do that? We love avo. I'm a long-time dedicated follower of avo cigars. Uh, long like time. I said, this is, this is the first cigar I ever fell in love with. I love it. Avo really has a special place in my heart. Always will. Always has. It is. We're also highlighting pretty cool. We've got the West Regional version. I'm sorry, release from Avo. So it's the West Side. Very West cool. Side. West West Side. Very very cool. Uh, we are sporting some beautiful new Avo earbuds in the nice Avo orange. Uh, we have the unexpected. Those are cool. Um, mystery cigar. Those are really cool. Pack. We've got a four pack. It's got two mystery cigars in it. And then two, two mystery cigars. And then two of the unexpected, yep. the new Avo uh, Ashtray, and of course the LE 2019s. Those limited editions are fantastic. Those are unbelievable. If you guys have any questions about these cigars, we have every Avo that's out. We've got every Avo. Um, we have, I think, 10 boxes of these LEs. Wow. We got 10 boxes of the LEs. We would love Ooh. to sell you one. All you got to do is call me. All you got to do is do what you need to do. Uh, we do have a couple boxes of the West Side. Um, yeah. Crazy. Ten boxes of the limited edition. Well, wow. we, we just bought them all. You know why? I mean, because it's incredible. We got a thousand square foot humidor here, but I didn't know we had ten boxes. Uh, That's pretty wild. Great sticks, though. Great we stars. do. So we're smoking avo today. Um, and uh, for the show tonight, we're going to do our smoking avo. What's up, Scott? What's up, uh, we've got a brand new segment for you called, yo, I got a problem. You all saw it. We just thought of it uh, yesterday. And what we're going to do is we're going to attack. We're going to attack cigar problems. Right. Whatever it is. Lighter Whatever problems. Whatever questions you have. Cutting and lighting. We're taking care of it today. It's, it's over today after today. Yeah. No more. You just have to frame. It's kind of like... um. Uh, Jeopardy, where you have to form it in the form of a question. And the form of the question goes like this. Yo, I got a problem with my lighter, <laughs> and it doesn't seem to light right. And Scott's going to say, yo, I'll we'll solve it. And then once it's all finished, we'll say, check out the hook, let the DJ revolve it. Nice, nice baby. We got a uh, crowd on hand here for the live show. Yeah. Hopefully they're not using their volume on the You know what? Phones. Yeah, let's uh, turn the volumes off on your phones. Let's get off of our internet. Get onto your Wi-Fi or off of the Wi-Fi, and let's get ready for a darn good show today. We are excited. It is a good day today. Packed show. It is a packed, packed house of a show. We are we are so prepared today. Over prepared, I would um, we're, say. I mean, really. We've got, look, look at this. Burge is saying Avo was the man. If there was ever an understatement in that, that is an understatement. He was like the, king. Like the man. Yep. Not only incredible cigar maker, incredible family man. Musician. Musician. Artist. Artist. And, and single-handedly worked with Davidoff to create some of the greatest brands of all time. Yep. It's mic drop time. Boom. Drop it. The man in the hat. Avo. Man in the hat. Bill mentioned at the very bottom there that, uh, or right there, that We've got the best humidor currently in Las Vegas. Right there. Bill, we appreciate that. Bill, sure. thank you so much, buddy. I can't wait to come to Vintage Havana Cigars on September 7th for their one-year anniversary where we will be doing our live show live from Vintage Havana, Ridgecrest, California. 
earthquake capital of the world. We're going to move it and shake it just like they do in Ridgecrest all day long. Baby. That's pretty exciting. It is. I can't wait, dude. Is that going to be our first live show? It's going to be our first Outside live show. Of the, uh, we're preparing. Show. We're preparing, dude. You know what we're preparing for, right? September 20th when we go live it's gonna be exciting. from Area 51 where they're going to storm the we're gates be, <laughs> and we're going to be there, gonna baby. Be we are going to be at least three miles away from where everyone else is going to get in big trouble. But we're going to be doing a live show within shouting distance of the furthest person away from the fence. Yeah. As long as Under a tent. Shot, as long as we're shot, yeah. we'll be good. We're going to stay far away, but we are going to, we have to get that, we have to get that live feel, you know? We smoke with them aliens. Yes, aliens, baby, all day long. By the way, if, if anyone ever comes into our shot like that again, it's probably only because his name is Glenn, the producer. <laughs> so um, sometimes we ask Glenn to come into the shot, and other times we tell him to stay out of the shot. Depends how good my outfit and hair is looking today. Well, I'm, you know, and I'm pretty happy with you, Scott. I'm, I'm, it's about ready for the What's Up Scott uh, section here. And um, I got to say, I like that shirt better than the flannel. Really? Yeah. I'm, I, it's a lighter, a little bit more summery feel. The flannel is very, you know, like lumberjacky. It's not really flannel. It's just the flannel pattern. But the material is more of a cotton. So flannel is a pattern now. No, flannel is like a material, I think. True. Pattern is synonymous with flannel, but not necessarily a flannel shirt per se. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I am uh, excited about what everybody's smoking. Mike Elliott is having a punch tonight. Mike, what punch would that be, my friend? The Diablo. The Diablo. What else do we got? What's Laz over? Laz, what are you smoking? Punch. I love it. My guys from Austin are coming by, Reggie and Johnny. Where are they at, Darcy? Come on now. Glenn, what are you smoking this week? Hey, look, yeah. Bill says, I have a problem. You all solve it, Bill. I got that. What are you, what are you smoking, Glenn? West West, y'all. Wait, wait, well, show it. What is he's it? He's smoking the Avo West Ooh, Regional. Ooh, the Regional. Ooh, oh, he's smoking Regional. The West Side. Yo, West, Coast, West Side Regional. Bill says, I have a problem. I don't have enough room for all my cigars at home. Seems like you're not smoking enough cigars, Bill. You got to either smoke more or buy a bigger humidor. Yeah. Oh, I like it. We got an alien post. Nice. Hey, guys. Happy to watch you all tonight. Enjoying a Gurkha Ghost. Ooh. Really likes it. Ooh. That's awful. I'm just looking at you, buddy. I hate to hear that. Mr. Hey, I say to each his own, baby. I smoke everything. Uh, that sounds right. All right. Uh, Darcy says better color. Ha huh? See? It's a light. It's a spring. It's like springy. A spring, summer color. Look at nice guys. See, look at all these people. Hey, we got Michael from Australia, baby. Boom. Michael, we've missed you, my friend. It's always great when we can say we have people from Australia who watch the show. I'm pretty sure it's like 6 a.m. in Australia right now. It's got to be. He's, but he's having a cigar, so, you know. Considering that's the absolute, like, between them and New Zealand, it's the hardest place in the world to get a cigar. Wow. That's pretty fantastic. All right, so let's get to what's up, Scott. Uh, this is the part of the show where we just check in with Scott, everything that's going on with him, and he gives us all the newest news in regards to the boardroom. So first of all, we may have people on the show today who have never heard of what the boardroom is, as you good, found out yesterday. That's a good point. Right? You found out yesterday in the startup. Yep. So the boardroom is an online group here. It's based out of Las Vegas. Designed to find Scott a wife. It's, <laughs> there is a search for a boardroom <laughs> wife. For there Scott. is. It's the, uh, that's but, what uh, it is. Do, I mean, the group is worldwide. We're all over the country and the world, but it's based out of Las Vegas. We have monthly cigar meetups in Las Vegas the first Sunday of every month. Uh, it's a free group to join. There's nothing you have to do to join. Just get on there. Uh, be active and uh, look for the updates of all the events. So it's really cool. We're just trying to grow the cigar culture here in Las Vegas, and it's been awesome so far. We got a couple thousand uh, members already, so we're trying to keep keep it going and keep it growing. So we've had a lot of. I think we've had five events so far. So it's been awesome. We're getting. Have you had any people. luck on the cigar wife? We've got some applications that have been turned in. Okay, uh, applications. We're, we're going over the. Uh, Do we get to review these? Well, we're going to start the interview process here shortly. Is it a, so are we doing in-person interviews? We're probably going to do in-person interviews, yeah. 
Probably not on the live stream, but that's up for Holy smokes, negotiation. man. But uh, what's, this, what's Michael it's saying? The freaking Australian tobacco tax oh, is going like crazy. Dude, that's nuts. But he did offer a good A. Nice. He good offered a. a good A. Good A, mate. Good A, Michael. Good All right, so the boardroom. Um, what's up, Scott? Also includes, you know, what's going on with you and your life, man? Like, tell everybody about, you know, you got a new job. I did get a new job. You were smoking a cigar in a pool yesterday, not a hot tub, a pool. Yep, switching it up. Those there days. was a, a bit of confusion, though. You did post the picture before you started smoking it, and it did have a band on the bottom. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. You got to do a dry, you know. Dry pull on it to get the flavor profile. With with the band on the bottom? Yeah. All right. That, does that enhance the flavor? You just want to check out the uh, profile before you light up. All right. You know. All right. Nothing too strange there. Does she need to send a of picture of her that. cigars? I think they're talking about your cigar wipes. She just... needs to have an adequate cigar collection. Okay, so I know we've preferable. talked about this before, but let's just say, like, totally intelligent – amazing, you know, like a great cigar acumen. Sounds pretty good. She got a little money. That's good. Right? She's like her own independent woman. Nothing wrong with that. She's like showing you love and affection. Wow. But, but. she happens to like a Gurkha ghost every once in a uh, while. No. <laughs> so. She's out. What kind, yeah, it's That's an it. out? That's it. That's it. Oh Ow. my gosh, Ow. Scott. Ow. So like the one. No, oh, Chuck, no thank you, buddy. No Gurkhas. We appreciate you sharing. We appreciate that, Chuck. Thanks, sir. All right, so it's a no go. Yeah, if she's in the Gurkha, I'm out. No Gurkhas. Do you have the conversation? Hey, look. You seem like it's a like, fantastic. It's right before you ask about like her family, like where she grew up. It's like, do you like Gurkha cigars? Okay, so it's, it's like, like this. Right so like, back. all right, so like we're out to dinner and. You know, you're the girl, and I'm you. We'll switch roles here. And then you're like, so, um, you know, how's your job? Oh, it's good, great. Um, <laughs> wow, you know, I mean, you look you look really pretty tonight. Uh, oh, you like cigars, you. right? Oh, I love cigars. You love cigars. Okay, so, um, you know, my favorite cigar is the Avo Intermezzo, uh, the, the XO, Avo Legato, probably. the XO. Um, what's yours? Uh, the Gurkha Seduction. Check, please. <laughs> Check. That's really what waiter. Like. Waiter, come on up. No, I don't care. She's hot. She's her own woman. She got money. I don't care. She smokes Kirka. Get over here. Come on. Is that how it is? That's how it is. Jeez, dude, you run a hard bargain there, bro. This is crazy. No Kirka. That is crazy. Oh, that's low. Look at that. I do not support their brand. Wow. All right. Well, let's move. Let's about. move on. Let's move on. Um, is there anything else in your world right now? You gearing up for any big events? Uh, anything coming into planning? You got anything? I know that uh, Big Smoke is coming in November. I mean, we just had an awesome boardroom event on Sunday night at the Casa. It was a great time. You guys were already closed at five, so didn't have much of a choice. We had to go across town to uh, another lounge. But uh, other than that, we do have families uh, we like to spend time with. I would have been there, but I had my daughter's, believe it or not, my daughter's 25th birthday. It was a good time, though. Yeah. Great turnout. We had a lot of folks show up for that. It was uh, uh, a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, we've got another event coming up probably. We're going to do the weekend after. Check, please. Check, please. Check, please. That could be a segment, too. We're leaving. Check I'm please. leaving right now. Sorry, honey. I'll pay for your Uber, but if you smoke a Gurkha, forget it. We're wow. probably going to do our next event right after Labor Day. Labor Day, I think, is the first. We're weekend. having a cut and light uh, on September 3rd. Oh, wow. With uh, Brandon. It's going to be a busy Use weekend. Casa Cuevas action. We're thinking a lot of people are going to get out of town. We're probably going to do it the 8th, Sunday the 8th, I believe, September. I think will be our next boardroom event. So that will be posted here within the next probably three or four days. We'll get that up and get that planned and uh, kind of watch for that. Other than that, not a whole lot. I was in a uh, – so I'm in a drive-thru today. What were you doing in a drive-thru? I was getting some food. Oh, what kind of food were you getting? Had the day off today. Thought, you know what? You're gonna splurge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally splurge. A little Sonic. Del, Del uh, Taco. Oh gosh. Del, 
Mother Taco. Really? Yeah. That's some good stuff. Really? If, if I have Del Taco, dude, I could not be sitting down right now. I, I, I couldn't do it, bro. I'd be up and down like crazy. Del That's like Taco. Del Taco and Taco Bell do not go well with my insides. Del Taco. All right. What does one order at Del Taco drive thru Um, I usually get the, uh, they have like a Southwestern uh, burrito. All right. Chicken burrito, Southwestern chicken burrito. Pretty so tasty. it's obviously really healthy. So I'm going through the drive thru either. There's like a line, six or seven cars. Uh huh. And I'm going through and I order my food. She's like, okay, baby, it's going to be 574 at the next window. I'm like, baby. I'm like, all right. Can she see you? No, at this point, she can't see me. But, well, as far as I know. All right. So I'm going, you know, I'm going through and, and like I'm on my phone. Phone's blowing up. Show's about to start here, like, you know, in an hour. Or yeah, you're late. You showed up late. I was late today. So. I hope this has something to do with you being late. It, well, a little bit. So, <laughs> long story short, I finally get up to the window. There's like five or six cars there, whatever. I finally get up. My food's taking forever. And I'm like, what the heck? And waiting, waiting, waiting. And I see her, like, she's got my food over there, whatever. And then she's like, it looks like she's doing something with, like, messing with it. She's riding on my, my food. I'm like, okay, I didn't, I, I didn't change the like order. Like with salsa or no, hot like sauce? No, like with the Sharpie. So I didn't, like, I didn't, you know, change the order. I didn't specifically order, you know, no onions or, okay. or add anything else. So there was nothing different about the order. There was no two items that were identical where they'd have to, like, distinguish between the two. So finally, she gives me the bag. She goes, have, have, a, day, have a great day, sweetheart. Hands me the bag. I look in the bag. Her phone number is written on the wrapper of the burrito. Dude, you got yourself a drive-through phone number. Phone number. Does that happen to anybody else? Is that a thing? Can we like check out the chat and see? Has anyone else gotten a phone number in a drive-through on a Tuesday? I, 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 I gotta did. say, I'm. I just I, did. I'm somewhere between, like, I don't know if I'm happy for you. Are you going to find happiness with a drive through burrito number? Hey, hey, I don't judge. I'm not judging. I'm saying, are you going to be happy with a Sharpie on the phone number? I mean, do I, what, what's the protocol? Do I call it? Like, do I wait a day? I, do I text? I do say, I, ignore it? I go with the swingers. Wait three days. Yep. Then call. Then a call. I would call. Well, they didn't, when swingers came out, they didn't have texting. True, you just had to call. You don't text, bro. Do I, I mean, okay. I'm, no, you Here's don't what text. we're gonna do. Ladies in, that are watching live, do I text or do I call? And how long do I wait? <laughs> Chris, Chris said, hell no. Clyde goes, lucky you. Lucky you, fast food fling. Fast food. Give her my address. <laughs> Michael, I never get that lucky. How do I do that? Is Michael in Australia? Yeah, we'll give me yes. address. We'll fly right yeah, over. Yeah, Michael, we'll fly her right over to 22 you. hours. Uh, make sure to ask if she smokes Gurkhas. Oh, gosh. That's hilarious. And okay, so imagine if you call her and you're like, hey, I'm the guy that got the burrito. And she's like, oh, you're order number 644. What if she gave it out to multiple guys? That's what I'm saying. And she kept the orders. And she's like silver, infinity, blah, blah, blah. That's actually not like, like so think about it. If she does that Chubby to white everybody. Guy. <laughs> white guy in Lexus. Um, like, what if she does that to like 50 people? I bet she has good return on her investment. She's going to get some phone 50 calls. 50 guys, she's going to get some phone calls. Yep, definitely. I think we might need to bring her on the show. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. We need to understand her epic. strategy. What strategy is she using? I could do the interview right here with her. You could. We, and it might end up being like a match made in heaven. Wow. Now, I had a cigar lit. So maybe she saw the cigar and was like, this is my guy right here. Wow. Who knows? We'll never know. Well, we may, I mean, wow. if we can get her on the show. I got you. Wow. I'm booking it right we'll now. We'll have to do some intel. All right, let's, let's do some intel. Let's call her and find out if we can get her on the show. 
Um, all right. So other than your drive-through love affair, uh, the boardroom blowing up, um, and some good events nice. coming on, yeah. everything is good in the life of Johnny Hot Tub. Yep. All right. Might be in a hot tub later tonight. Who knows? Pool or hot tub, one of the Just two. randomly. I tried to get in my hot tub last night. It was too freaking hot. Not the hot tub. The outside was too hot to get in the hot tub. Wow. Was not a fan. It was like 113. Anyway. All right, so we are smoking Avo today. Um, Avo made in the Davidoff factory. Uh, probably one of the most unique pre-light smelling cigars. Ever. Ever. Um, brand galore. I mean, there are so many. We have an entire wall of, of Avo back there. Uh, these are just three offerings. Mainly Dominican tobacco, if you guys are uh, This one's got a little Nicaraguan in it. This one's the unexpected mystery, so we don't know what's in the mystery cigar. Right. Uh, and then, you know, the West Side, the West Side? Is, uh, is regional. That's a uh, Dominican as well. But and, a, and a cool size on this one, too. If you guys, yeah, it is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a torpedo, and then it's like a Robusto torpedo. Oh, no, wait. It's very, very cool. Dude. This guy has the best idea in the world. What's that? Caller. Yep. No, now. Yeah. Caller now. On the show right now. Caller. Caller? Caller. Yeah. Do it. Caller on the show. Go get the number and call it. I threw away the bag. Oh, come on. That's. Come on. See, now I'm wondering if if that was just a. No, no, no. I mean, I could get the. I threw it away. Oh, man. I threw it away in front of uh, Walgreens. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Should I go after? Should we call Don, Don, that is an amazing idea. I cannot believe. You have no way to get a hold of her now. Oh, jeez. She's the one, dude. I wasn't that interested based on the look of things. So from I now on, from now on, You're right, okay, if there's not like going to be some kind of follow-up, don't bring it up on the show. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who thinks you're following don't, live don't on the show? What? You don't think we're gonna ask? Mm. Come on, bro. You're not an alpha. Seriously? Live on the show. Put live. Her on the spot. Call her live on the show. Put her on the spot. That's a little nerve wracking. I think it's fantastic. See, everybody's saying you should call. <laughs> Threw it away. A taco Whatever. emoji. The taco. <laughs> He's got taco emojis. That's Is hilarious. she still working? Call the restaurant. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. And people think that possibly she could be the one. Jasmine was the name on the Jasmine. The number. How can you not call back a Jasmine? I don't know. Oh, my Lord. All right. Um, no, no balls, <laughs> Ruben. It really would have been amazing to have you call her on the show, bro. Live I mean, that show. would have been. That would have been epic. I literally want to send you she to that like trash can. She would have hung up on this, I think. No way. You would have played it up. We would have had to find a way to put it on speaker. It would have ruined everything. Oh, my gosh. Can you go back there tomorrow and get the number for next week? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go back and see if she gives you the number again. Say, so, you know what? I threw away your number I need by accident. I need it again. I want to call you. And then I'm gonna Don't you know I'm popular? I'm the owner of the boardrooms, Las Vegas, Dark <laughs> Elevator. <laughs> I'm a big deal. All right. Um, Rhonda's on. What up, Rhonda? Well, Rhonda missed you're, the whole story. You're missing all the fun, Rhonda. She might get upset. Good she Lord. might come out here and take it to Jasmine. Woo. Who knows? That could, be, that could be ugly. That is a total serious thing moment. All right. So we've got a brand new segment on the show where we uh, have an opportunity to help with maybe like normal things that happen that people who are smoking cigars have to deal with. Yep. Um, no thing is too small of a problem. No thing's too big of a problem. We need your help. We so during this, help. during this segment, it's like Jeopardy. Okay, so you have to give your answer in the form of the question. And the question starts with this. Yo, I got a problem. And then you list your problem. And then Scott, once we read it, will say, Yo, I'll solve it. All right, and then we will, uh, we will help you with your problem. So the first things first, we're going to talk about lighters. We are going to talk about lighter maintenance. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need producer Glenn. Can you please go get us a can of butane and that little um, screwdriver that we have in the little little section over there? So a lot of people 
have trouble with their life. All the time. Okay. Every day. And there are, I would say, about two or three simple fixes. So, for example, I come to you, Scott, and I said, yo, Scott, I got a problem. Yo, we'll solve it. My lighter won't light. Really? Nope. It just, as many times as I click it. Won't click. It won't click. Thanks, sir. What's one of the first things that you're going to say to me to check? Have you checked the gas? Right here, you can adjust the flame. Did you know that? Wait, on the bottom of cigar lighters, you can adjust the flame? You can adjust the flame. So it could be adjusted right so low that it, it doesn't? In your pocket, it can actually get turned to the point where it's so low that it actually will not fire at all. You oh, really? Fire, yep. So you turn it up, boom, still won't fire. Next right. thing you're going to want to try, you want to bleed whatever. You want to check the, uh, the fluid level. Yeah, you want to check the gas. This one has a window. And you want to go ahead and get a like small screwdriver. There's a metal pin in there. Yep. And you want to stick that in there and bleed the fluid at whatever fluid is out of it. If there's any air in the system, you want to bleed it right out. Then, once you've bled out <laughs> all the extra air, you're going to want to take your handy dandy uh, butane here, and then you're going to want to refill it through the bottom. So you want to fill it up like so. Yep. Sometimes you gotta do that little like, like kind of like push on and get that, get that, yeah, get that air out a little bit. So you're gonna do a little bit of that, and it looks like Dan may have problems with his lighter. And then you try to uh, fire it here, and then you give it a second. Let me you, it's too high. It's blowing itself out. It's too high. Yeah. There, there you go. 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 Boom. And it's lit. I'm All right. So it. to go go over this because Dan. Dan has the very first yo. I've got a problem. All right, so yo, I got a problem. I have a Zycar Volta that just isn't working right. It only fires if I have it cranked up max or under or one notch under. Okay, I'm gonna solve it. Go ahead. Dan, flip it upside down. Stick something in it that'll make the gas come out. Get it all out. Every single thing that you can imagine. Get it out of there. Get okay, the next. I'll do it with this one because this one has it. A very underutilized tool in the cigar world. Your breath. Blow as hard as you can on these three little gas nozzles. Just like that, right? Then you're going to turn it upside down, fill it all the way up, yep. right? Turn it down to medium, give it a couple seconds. Fire and then fire away. All right? The good thing is if that doesn't work, Zycar has a lifetime warranty. Boom. Send it back, baby. And Bill is right. Bill is right. The other thing is, is that if you are not using good triple, uh, what's it called? Triple distilled or triple, uh, triple, uh, Let's see what this one is. Refined. refined, triple refined butane, you are going to have trouble. You've you got to use good butane. This one's the Simple. first finest grade butane. Finest grade butane. Probably not that good. Probably um, not that good. If it's cold, you got to give it some time. So when you fill up your cigar lighter, sometimes it gets really cold. All you got to do is give it a little warm, make sure it's warm, and then bam, lights up. Who else has a problem we can solve? Is there any other problems out there? Don't smoke a cigar over the lighter when you bleed it. Yeah, yeah. Keep the lighting of cigars very different Separate. than your cleaning or maintenance. Yes. So anybody else out there have a problem that we're going to maybe have a solution to? Everybody watch out. James Lindsay just joined the chat. Watch uh, out. What's up, James? And, uh, yeah, oh, by the way, Rhonda was ready to do some damage earlier. What's she, that? quote, said, who is messing with my man? Who is messing with my man? All right, Dan, I hope that helped you with your problem. Uh, I've had that happen a bunch. Uh, mostly what it is, just a little bit of gas that got, got caught in there. Like and, air, uh, air in the system. Air in the system. You just got to get that, that air out of there. Um, I've got three handhelds that don't work, and it's not the flame or glass or bleeding. 
Um, could be the igniter. You know, I'm the other thing you can look. Though. Yeah, you can look and not don't look this way. Okay, look far away, and if you when you click it, if you don't see a little spark. spark Okay, you can sometimes clean them, but that doesn't work most of the time. No. That usually means that your lighter's done. So if there's no spark on, there's a tiny little like arm that yeah, lights. And your igniter's out. And your igniter's out. And then you're done, so. Go for it. So Glenn is coming on to the screen. He's got a tip for us. Okay, I used to have a really, a really cool uh, tabletop lighter, and then all of a sudden it would click, there would be gas, nothing would come out. There's a little igniter, the little igniter uh, dealio right there. All I would do is I, is I found that it would get bent somehow. So I would do is just take a little pocket knife carefully, put it and adjust it. Over one of the flames. Over one of the flames yep. or, or move it, maybe it's too close, maybe move it a little away because that would conduct the little spark that you need to set it off. That's a good one. And then you just, and then you just click, and then usually it'll it'll um, adjust it, and it'll give it the spark it needs to, to light up. And that used to be a constant problem with one of my old uh, tabletop lighters. So you could try that one out. If, if you get click, if you get gas, and there's still no fire, you could try that out. Wow. Also, if there's butane shooting out the top of your lighter, when you fire, not a good sign. You want to just throw that one right in the trash. Um, Unless it has a lifetime warranty. True. Chris Patterson has a great piece of advice. It is not necessarily a, yo, I got a problem, and no, we can't solve it. Mm -hmm. But his is that please don't keep your butane lighters in a hot car. Yep. I think that is one really easy way to ruin your lighter and possibly no. blow up your car. Never a good idea. Right? Never I mean, I'm pretty sure. Idea. All right, anyone else have a, a problem. yo, I got a problem? I had one the other day. Yo, I got a problem. Oh, okay, I'll solve it. All right. So I'm smoking a cigar the other day. I cut the cigar. Okay. I do, I do a punch cut, right? And I'm lighting up the cigar. Nothing's coming out. No smoke at all. Nothing. Completely plugged. Nothing. I mean, I couldn't get any smoke out of it. Nothing was happening. Throw it away. <laughs> That's the solution? That's my solution. No. Okay, so very first thing you got to check, right? It's what I like to call. Walk me through it. I, I start with the massage. Okay. I'm going to massage the cigar a little bit. I'm going to take it. I'm going to squeeze on a little bit. I'm going to find out if there's any big stems. You're not going to be a squeezer, though. Not a squeezer. You're not squeezing. You're the doing massage. a massage. Massage. Because you know what? Sometimes that tobacco gets in there real tight and it just needs a little massage to loosen up the leaves so you can draw more. So nice. I'd say give it a massage, then you're going to take a couple draws. See if that's improved things. Now, if at that point you have no more smoke. Yep. Wait, you did have a, like the lighter was working. Yep. And it lit up the cigar. Correct. Okay. So next thing's next. I always go to the end of the cigar. I go to the end of the cigar and I start touching it. I'm looking for any kind of stem. Yep. I'm looking for any kind of hard piece that's like blocking. blocking. If I find it, then I start digging. Okay. And I'm going to pull out that stem. Okay. Sometimes I then will then have a, it'll be like, oh wow, it's all gone. I can then smoke it. Wow. Right? Okay. Now next. What? No, okay. Next, if you're squeezing it and it just squeezes, I mean like you're going like this, <laughs> you got yourself what's called the sponge. And it doesn't matter how much you light it, it doesn't matter how much you pull on it, there's no chance that cigar is ever going to be good to go. Now, I started with the punch cut. Would you go then with maybe like a straight cut? Absolutely. To try to open them Oh, up? yeah, you got to find out what that problem is. Yeah. You got to diagnose. Now, what about poking your cigars? Ooh, forgot about the poker. So open them up. If you have yourself a poker. Because I've seen that before. The cigar poker. Yeah. Right? It's like a long stick of some sort. A skewer. A skewer. If you will. If you will. Um, <laughs> then you 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 got to be careful, though, because you got to get, like, the perfect 
angle into the cigar to kind of give it a little bit yeah. of you some don't space. Want to go out the side. You don't want to go right you don't the side because the then you're done. Yeah, done. So you got to kind of get in there. You're going to kind of maybe twist it a little bit. You're going to twist it a little sideways. Okay. Try and create a little air pocket. Okay. That would be how I'd go. If you try all of those things, put down your Gurkha. Yikes. Probably a Is a problem. We got a Is that what you were looking for? Was that was that was that a fair enough? That's great solid? advice. That's great advice. Sometimes one needs to depress trigger slowly so gas starts before the spark. That's true. Good point, Bill. When you're working with your cigar lighter, sometimes guys just want to bam, 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 and it, you know, sometimes you got to get give, give a little love. Got to give it a little love. Slow depression. And yeah. that. Nice job, Bill. Thanks for that. I I I uh. Appreciate that. Question, Roll your cigar in your hands. Always do a cold, cold draw first, and always do a straight cut. Ooh, always do a straight always. cut. Always. Ooh, Chris just, said those words. Always. They call me Mr. B in the hot tub. B cut. You know, B cut. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Mr. B cut. Whoa. What were you thinking? Uh, you said Mr. B in the hot tub. Yeah, B cut. Yeah, I'm not the one turning red, bro. You said Mr. B. All right, toothpick in a pinch. That's true. Toothpicks will work. Yep. I love it. Um, you guys are fantastic today on the comments. We're really appreciative of it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, cool. Thanks for sharing our, our show today. Uh, we're, 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 just, we're just happy about it. The one thing that I think is somewhat troubling to me, though, is that we're still at 46 YouTube channel subscribers. We've got to get all you. I mean, how are we at 46? We have like 1,000, 1,500 on the, the, page, the main page on Facebook? I don't even know. We, we get like up to 6,000 people viewing every week. I we just need can't to get all the folks it. transferred over to YouTube. If there's a problem. Yep. With, you never know. It could be tomorrow. With what's going on with YouTube, like, oh, I don't have a Gmail account. I don't want to go through all that. All right. Well, I mean, it can't take more than two minutes to set up a Gmail account. If you guys want to support us, if you guys like what you're seeing, if you guys like being part of the show, jump over, subscribe on YouTube, Lounge Talk. Just search Lounge Talk on YouTube. If you don't have an account, just create an account. It takes two seconds, and then uh, you'll be all set up. We might have to move everything over from Facebook over to YouTube due to some of the uh, the new rules that are in play. We talked about uh, last week and the week before, I think, so... Definitely jump onto YouTube if you're not already subscribed. Subscribe. We want to get all you guys over there. So, yeah, it's kind of kind of my seriously moment is that I can't believe we have 46 subscribers. I'd like to have a lot more. Um, I do have a question for all of you, and I uh, need your opinion today. Scott and I are under our very first studio lighting. Yep. We got some studio lighting here. We some just wondered, does it look better? Does the feed look better? Not do we I look it. better, I I look. but does the actual like whole show look a little clearer, a little brighter? I wouldn't say studio because we're live in the lounge right now. No live, but we've got a you know we've got ourselves a nice big. Don't look at that light because it like messes it, your. It's <laughs> bright. It messes up your vision for a couple of uh, seconds after you're done with it. What do you guys think of the new look with our new lighting setup? I gotta show everybody this up close. Because this is one of my favorite things about Avo cigars. I think I know what you're going to say. So, a lot of cigars, traditional cigars, don't have this beautiful. Is it in focus? Can you see it? Uh, yep. There you go. Hold this back a little bit. Beautiful thick wrapper. It wants to focus in the background, but they can see it. That's, that's burning so beautifully. And that dark, perfect. that dark ash. And that dark, dark. Dark ash of the Avo cigar. I'm telling beautiful, you what. Beautiful. If you have not had an Avo that has that beautiful ash on it, you're missing out. You're missing out, man. You are missing out. It's a beautiful thing. Speaking of ash, we did uh, last week get to meet Robert Brown of the Grown Ash Cigar Society. Society out of West Palm Beach. If you guys haven't checked out their cigar group, check them out. Pretty good dudes. Robert's a cool dude, yeah. James says your forehead isn't as shiny. Not quite as shiny. Nice. Maybe not as oily. People are saying yes. Oh, Clyda says yes, absolutely better. The chlorine makes my uh, you know, forehead a little bit extra shiny sometimes. Oh, we talked about Robert and he showed up. Whoa. That was crazy. We literally just Robert, gave a shout out to Grown we Ash Cigar just, Society. 
We were just talking about you, Robert. Wow. That's a little creepy. It's pretty fantastic. Well, we appreciate it. Um, Someone might have tagged Robert. I don't know. Now, you want to thank my nine-year-old daughter who said that, Dad, you should use my LED light that I use for my YouTube videos uh, at your show. And I was like, really? She goes, yes, it makes you look like all the YouTubers. There you so go. So we, uh, we employed the LED light of my nine-year-old. Nice. <laughs> I know, right? That's awesome. Please let me know if you need any shirts, but please, but, but a please print. I'm not sure. Please let me know if you need any t any shirts. Ruben, I will let you know. I don't know. I think I'm good on he, shirts. Is he trying to lend you some of his shirts? I don't know. But please print? I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't Mr. Know Williams I, says much better on the, uh, the setup with the lighting. Even Scott's looking pretty good. I do look pretty good. I like it. We've got to find you a cigar wife, bro. Um, I'm about right now, I'm into this, like, just sinking into the just beautiful perfection that is the Avo XO. It's, it's like, like a creamsicle right here. It's just it's beautiful. So flipping. I mean, you can see how dark that ash is. It's crazy from a Dominican cigar. It's just, wow. If you're sleeping on Avo, you're, you're nuts. Speaking of Avo, where's our producer? Where did he run off to? When he comes back, I want to show you a really special thing that Avo is presenting to certain cigar shops. We're lucky to be one of those cigar shops. Um, and on September 27th, we're going to be doing this amazing raffle of a, a, just an unbelievable humidor that they only made 50 of in the whole world. So there's only edition. 50 of these limited edition humidors. You want me to grab it? Um, well, we can wait for Glenn. Okay. Uh, but I want to tell you a little bit about what Avo is doing. They have these incredible promotions. Uh, we're running them right now at Las Vegas Cigar Outlet. Uh, if you'd like to come down, be a part of our raffle, we'd love for you to do that. Uh, we've got cigars galore. So like I said, we have every, every, every Avo there is. I think if you buy a box, you get five free cigars? Yep, you get five free cigars. A raffle ticket. You get the ashtray. And the earbuds. And you get the orange Avo The earbuds. Avo earbuds. Limited edition Avo earbuds. One box of cigars. You get five free ones. It's pretty you get fantastic. A for the limited edition humidor. You get the ashtray and the earbuds. Pretty fantastic deal. Any box of Avo you want. Can you mix and match? I don't know. Can you mix, can and, you match mix and match? Yeah, you can mix and match a boss. Absolutely. Very Just got to cool. get up to 20 and then you're good to go. Um, Rhonda says, hello, I'm right here. Hello. That must have been, hello. Our wife, hello. She's in a, oh, boy, boy, boy. I have to say I enjoyed chilling with y'all. As you saw, I kept coming back. People be ready. Grown Ash Cigar Society event coming soon to Las Vegas Cigar Outlet. Ooh, That's what I like to hear. That's the power of Facebook Live. That's what commenting, sharing the leaf. With everybody. We might be uh, joining up with the uh, Grown Ash. Oh, with, heck uh, the yeah, baby. Let's do it. We might do a big blow event. Let's do a big event, baby. Nothing like just getting people together who love to smoke, love to have a good time, right? Yep. That's what it's all about, baby. That's, That's what it. it's all about. All right. So we've got uh, our seriously moment of the week. And uh, I don't know if this one is coming from Scott. <laughs> do you have any seriously moments from this week? <clears throat> um got a few in my head, but what was yours? I've got a few floating around. Well, I was asking you because I don't currently have one. You don't. I was just trying to come up with one in my head. I was trying to think about it while you were possibly going to offer one. We need to know where Glenn, our producer, is. Where did Glenn, our producer, go to? I think he's in the brush. We want to show him this gorgeous, we want to show him this gorgeous uh, humidor we've got. But uh, in terms of seriously, so... Uh, I've, got a, I've got a pretty disgusting one that came from the lounge uh, that I was involved with a few years ago. I don't know if we want to go into that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the mood for disgusting. I would like to circle back around to the fact that a drive through girl gave you her phone number and you threw it away instead of bringing it here and calling it on the show. I did not think to call her live on the air. but uh, I mean, are you telling me you don't think about this show 24-7? 23-7. Because <laughs> that would have been, epic. I mean, that would have been epic to call she her. She would have hated me at that point. We could add that as a segment. Like she's also, we call work, people she's also working right now, so I would assume. Yeah, but if she answers, you know you're important. 
she can't not answer. That's true. That's true. I still think you should call. I'll be getting my box September 7th in person, not over the phone. Boom. All I need is one raffle ticket. James Lindsay, that's what I'm talking about. Is he coming in? There we go. All right, so we want to show you this amazing humidor. There's only 50 of these humidors in the whole world, uh, and we have number 25. And this is our raffle prize. It's going to be on September 27th. So here it is. Glenn's going to show it to us. And I do have a serious moment. That's good, because I need some more time to think of one. Boom. Why don't we throw it right on the Can front? we throw it in the front? Yeah. We have some room. Can you, can you just... Just throw it right up there. Yeah, you can put it on top of there. Boom. They won't crush anything. Nope. Look Not at this all. thing, man. Boom. Let's show them the front. Open it up. Oh, yeah. Look Woo. at that thing. So I like a 250 count humidor. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to open this thing up. This is what you get with the raffle ticket if you win. Uh, right here in the corner, I don't know if you can see on the other side, there's a limited edition logo there. 25 of 50, very cool. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Very, very cool. Uh, awesome products. It's pretty much one of a kind. Uh, it's just gorgeous. And when you take that top off, uh, when you down. yeah, set it down and take that top off. Oh. When you take that top off, like it's got a spot right in there for the Boveda packs. Show that right there. Boom. Show the tray. The tray is one of the coolest parts. Very cool. Boom. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is just beautiful. All kinds of amazing stuff can go into there, uh, wow. including all the boxes you buy of the Abos. Limited edition to 50 in the world. We've got, I believe, number 25. Is that right? 25. Yep, number 25. So 25 right there in the corner. 25 50. I don't know what a value. That'd probably be like three, four hundred dollars. I would imagine. That? Oh, I'd I'd go probably then, the four hundred to five hundred bucks. And then it's limited edition too, so then the value just increases. I would say so. I would absolutely say that that is a. Oh, sorry. You got the music pumping. So I figured for this part of seriously, we needed a little music. This is where we talk to Scott seriously about his love life. <laughs> we talk to him about why he would go through a drive through get a phone number, and then and throw, throw that phone away. number away. We thought that what he was doing was searching. But maybe he's just holding out for that one special one. Oh, uh, yeah. Never know. So what we're gonna do tonight, this is where we do a shout out, love dedication. <laughs> if you give him any kind of advice on how he could be better finding himself a cigar wife. More hot tubs, I think. Scott needs a cigar wife, everybody. Throw it up in the comments. Throw it up in the comments. Alright, that was fun. All right, um, let's see here. Chris Patterson says 600, 800 bucks. I'm going to have to agree with him. Yeah. I don't know what Glenn, the producer, is doing putting this thing in front of my beautiful chest. Get this thing out of here. like it. I like it. Get this humidor like out of here, Glenn. Um, all right, so uh, seriously, you have a serious moment. I do have a serious moment. Besides the fact that you threw away the female's phone number. That's, that's possibly a bigger seriously moment. That's it for me. I my seriously moment is I cannot believe, you know, like someone threw you a softball and you didn't even <laughs> talk Del Taco Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Del Taco Destiny. We got the fast food fling and we got the Del fast Taco food fling. Destiny. All right, so Julian, uh, the Abo cigar is this is the XO. So we're smoking the XO. This one right here is the LE 2019. And we get the, the West Regional Edition on this side. Uh, we also have a four-pack of Unexpected Cigars, which is the brand-new cigar by Avo. It's 
It's called The Unexpected. There are four different ones. And this one actually has two mystery cigars cool. in the four pack. So if I think it's for 35 bucks or I don't know how much it is. Uh, it's like $38. You get four cigars. Um, Under 10 bucks a piece. Yeah, and two of them are mystery smokes, which means we'll never know. You'll never know. We'll never know. You got to smoke it to find out. My seriously moment comes from us at a lounge that I used to be involved with. It's a little bit of a, a longer story. I'll try to make it short again. How long is it? Boom. It's a few minutes. So, All right. We had a customer uh, show up one day and uh, started buying a lot of expensive cigars. He was like, okay. He was actually handing out cigars. Opus X, Davidoff's, Padron and Rosario's. Just no handing, way. Handing cigars out to everyone that was in the lounge. Uh, like, wow, what a, right. what, a, what a generous guy. Yeah. Nice guy. Never gave us any problems. Never was an issue at all. Just always bought extremely expensive cigars. You know, always had everything ready to go. Uh, we, we would typically, like, run a tab. And then when he left, we would, uh, you know, cash him out for the day or whatever. Tabs, tabs, tabs are bad. And uh, so he would, you know, he would run up a big tab. And then he'd pay it at the you know, after every day when he left, he'd, you know, pay at the end of the tab or whatever. Because he might smoke four or five cigars, and then he might give away ten other cigars. And we're talking about $40 cigars here. So That would be $400. A day. A day. Yep. Good customer. Great customer. Good guy. We thought for the most part. Uh-oh. No problems. Nothing, you know, nothing really happening at all. And, uh, you know, long story short, uh, well, there's actually a second part to this. So he actually flew out a bunch of guys and the owner and two of the managers to Las Vegas from uh, Texas. I will say Texas. Okay. And uh, didn't really think of anything of it. I mean, he treated the whole thing, flights, hotels, money for gambling. He bought all the cigars. All right. Pretty much a free trip. Great. I mean, we're like, man, what a great guy. This is an awesome thing. This guy's like, he just came in. We didn't know from anybody. He's spending $400 a day. He's handing out 10 cigars. He's smoking five himself. Yeah. No issues at all. So a few months go by. After he had actually taken everyone already to Vegas, and he starts saying, "Hey, you know what? Go ahead and just, you know, I don't, I don't want to swipe my card every single day. Just go ahead and, you know, just, dun, dun, dun. just start running, just start running me a tab. Like at the end of the week, I'll clear it out. No big deal." So after like six months of, of this happening, the owner's like, "Yeah, no problem at all. Done. We don't care. You're good." Silly. And uh, this guy keeps buying the cigars, keeps handing them out. Week goes, goes by, it's that Friday, you know, it's time to pay. He doesn't show up. Saturday doesn't show up. Monday, Tuesday doesn't show up. Finally comes in Wednesday, oh yeah, well I've been out of town, blah, blah, blah. This and that, blah, oh, blah, blah, stories. No. Tell you what, I gotta take off right now, I'll be back. He, he talks to the employee, the owner wasn't there at that time. He talks to the employee, he doesn't know any better. He grabs like a handful more of like premium cigars and a couple other boxes. He's like, yeah, just throw it on the tab. At this oh, point, no. At this point, the tab is up to oh, like no. $4,500. $4,500. And uh, we're not seeing him come back in. Owner's calling him. We've got his email. We've got his phone number. Uh, we had an address where he lived. He signed up for like, he had a you know, locker membership. Members lounge, everything. He had paid for the whole year for the members lounge. So he's already paid up on that. So we got some money, you know, that way that uh, we were owed, you know, 10 for the rest of the year. Didn't show up. Luckily, we had some police officers that visited the lounge that were local, you know, regular customers. The police officers knew some guys at the FBI in Dallas. They did a, uh, there's a, there's a head, well, not headquarters, but there's a main uh, FBI office downtown Dallas. They did a background check on this guy. This guy is wanted in like six states. He's got like two or three felonies, money laundering, extortion, all these crazy charges like theft, like uh, felony theft and all this crazy stuff. Dude. Turns out the guy ended up fleeing to Mexico, never paid his tab, $4,500. And there was a federal like warrant out for his arrest. 
and we never saw him again. We don't know what happened. We don't know if he's in prison. We don't know where he's at. We don't know what's going on. Didn't pay any of the money. Ow. That's it. Never saw him again. Dude. Seriously? Seriously? That's one heck of a serious story. Never saw him again. The FBI told us he's in Mexico. They're trying to track him in Mexico. And he's listening to this music on the beach right now with all of those cigars. Or he's in prison in Tijuana. We're not sure. So when all else fails on the show, I'm going to start putting on this royalty-free music. Because we just sound better with music behind us. It's like a soundtrack to life. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Bravo. It's also, uh, it's also just fantastic. And uh, uh, I want to say today, I think we had a wonderful show. We smoked uh, smoked a lot of Avo, Avo XO in the house. If you haven't gotten yourself into Avos, please do so. You're missing out. Um, also, if you haven't had a chance to check out our show on YouTube, uh, go to the YouTube channel. It is Lounge Talk. It's too loud. Distorted. Distorted. Can I dance? Yes. All right. Can I take my shirt off? All right, our producer is no, saying no. that the music is a little too uh, <laughs> too annoying. But um, what we are is we're excited to tell you about our event. We've got a big event on September 3rd. We've got a cut and light uh, with Brandon, the cigar mechanic, with Casa Cuevas. The brand new Reservas are out. So we'll be doing a cut and light with him. Then on September 14th, we've got our big, huge Casa Cuevas. The entire, uh, well, not the entire, but Luis and Gabe from Casa Cuevas. Remember them from Very the cool. uh, yeah. interview? Uh, they're coming in. We're having a big event on the 14th. Uh, we're going to have a blowout Casa Cuevas party here at the Las Vegas Cigar Outlet. They're making some good um, stuff. They're making some great stuff. Uh, we've got some boardroom events. So if you haven't checked out the boardroom, check out the boardroom of Las Vegas Cigar Fellowship on Facebook. Um, and mo- at least, at least what, we got something. I was going to say, most importantly, jump most, on YouTube. Jump on YouTube. Subscribe. subscribe. Come on. Lounge please. Talk. Search for Lounge Talk. Jump over. We've got to get everyone moved over from Facebook over to YouTube and definitely pick up a box of Avo uh, for the event. You get a raffle ticket for the beautiful humidor you saw. You get the ashtray. You get the orange Avo earbuds. Oh, yeah, baby. And you get five additional cigars. It's pretty Both fantastic. Free. Pretty awesome. So, Wouldn't it be great if we could just smoke Avo on every show? That'd be amazing. If you guys don't know anything about Avo, man, just look Avo up. He is such an amazing guy. Check him out. Um, But last but not least, when you're in Las Vegas, I hope that you come down and visit the largest humidor in Nevada. 1,000 square feet of nothing but goodness, over 2,000 skews of cigars. We are here for you. We are ready for you. We've got coffee for you. Come on down. Visit us here at Las Vegas Cigar Outlet anytime you're in Vegas. If you are in Vegas and haven't been here, come on by. Say hi. Uh, We will... Absolutely hook you up with some great cigars from House Cigars all the way up to Opus X. Coming down and check us out. Uh, if you haven't seen our show on Tuesdays, join us every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Johnny Hot Tub, Cigar JJ will be here, and we will be on and popping. 9 Eastern. Anything else, Mr. Scott? 6 Pacific. 6 Pacific. That's about it. Just uh, subscribe on YouTube. Check that channel out. We've got all the other old videos posted. So you can check out those really easily and nice. Uh, it's a great site there. What about the, uh, do you want to mention the uh, the online? No, you don't want to mention anything that, that yeah, way? Yeah, we can't do online yet. There's no update on your. There's no update on, on any special news yet. We're going to be getting that up probably we're hoping that next week. We've got to have it by next week. Okay. So we're just hoping for some paperwork to come through and we can get some stuff together. I think um, that's it then. I think that's it. Hey, what a great show. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, uh, this evening, uh, live from live from Vegas, Lounge Talk. We'll be back again next Tuesday. And as I always say at the end of the show, go outside your house, go to your home, go to the place you work, and go do something nice for someone today and make the world a better place. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Later, guys. I like this music, dude. It's like vlogging me.